Hi there, how's it going? Um, I'm making this video today as I've had a few requests uh, from students, uh, both through the YouTube channel and in my school as well, asking about approaches for the SAT reading test. Now, for those of you out there who are practicing for the SAT reading, I feel your pain. It is a beast of a test. There's so many questions, so little time, and there's just a, a crazy amount of pressure on you to perform at a high level in those conditions. So a lot of students, they go into the SAT reading test with not much of a plan. Maybe they do a few past papers, they watch a couple of videos on YouTube, they don't do much else, but you, you really need a method. You need a template or a technique that you follow and a, which helps you approach this test in a systematic way that you can use time and time again. Um, so I'm gonna show you that um, in today's video. Okay, so SAT reading is a five step process. And step one, you have to know what you're looking for before you start reading, okay? Know what you're looking for before you start reading. What does this mean? Well, it means looking at the questions before you read the first passage. Don't just open the paper and read the passage straight away <clears throat> without looking at the questions because you will find yourself lost. You'll be in, in, in a far off land, in Narnia. Your head will be spinning. You'll want to throw up. You won't even know what's going on. So don't do that. Don't put yourself in that situation. Look at the questions before you begin. Now, as you're doing that, you have to think to yourself, which of these questions are big picture questions? Which are main idea questions? So these are questions that require you to know or require you to have read a large portion of the text or all of the text before you can answer the question. What you should do is circle those questions and then you'll come back to answer those at the end uh, once you've answered all the other questions. Okay, then the other questions in there will be what are called specific line questions. So these will be questions where it says in line five, the word, whatever it is, is used, uh, which, which word below has the closest meaning to it. So what you do is when you go through these specific line questions, you then go back to the reading text itself and you underline, uh, you put a mark beside that line and then you write the question number that it corresponds to from the questions. This way, once you've kind of circled them in idea, you've given yourself a little bit of a map to show you where these questions, the specific line questions are located. It makes it much quicker when you come to answer the questions, uh, just to kind of, you know, have a look at what's going on on your page and act much more quickly. Okay. Um, step two, once you've done all that, step two is to read the blurb that comes at the very beginning of every reading passage, okay? And in this blurb, it'll give you some details like dates. Um, it'll tell you who wrote it. It'll tell you a little bit what it's about. And from this, you can get context. Now, context can be very important in in SAT reading, okay? So perhaps, perhaps the, the, it's written in the 19th century, or perhaps it's written uh, in contemporary times, you know, only a few years ago. And this will kind of give you an idea of what to expect language-wise. You know, if it's written during the 19th century or say the 18th century, you'll know that the language coming up is going to be kind of old English and a little bit uh, kind of maybe very formal and uh, long sentences. If it's something more contemporary, it might be a little bit snappier, a little bit more what you're used to reading these days. Also, um, in there, you can find out maybe it's written by a scientist, maybe it's written by a historian, or it could be an economist. So reading this blurb and becoming familiar from that allows you to very build up a very, very quick snapshot of what you might expect to get in this passage. And it kind of mentally prepares you for what is about to come. So that's step two. Okay, So you read the blurb and you kind of make some very quick inferences of what is to come based on the information given there. Step three, uh, you read the passage and you should read with a laser focus, okay? Now, some people will say, don't read the, all the passage, only read topic sentences, only read the introduction, conclusion, and things like this. I don't agree with that. I think you want to try and get your reading speed up to a level where you can comfortably read the whole passage, okay? Because there's so many questions you will get wrong if you've only skim read or read for gist of the passage itself. And also you'll get really, really confused if you've only kind of skim read it and you, the chances are you'll just get lost and start guessing. 
Okay, now, as I say, with the laser focus, um, I recommend students when they're pre preparing for the SAT reading as well, it's not only about doing past papers, you should be reading an, a, a level appropriate novel as well. Um, you also should be reading nonfiction. So I recommend going to the BBC website um, or any quality news source, but the BBC is good up there at the very top, at the, the bar at the top, you can click on science articles, you can click on uh, articles about history, about current affairs, things like this. And um, what you should do is once you're, when you're actually reading these news articles, read them like you would read the SAT passage. Okay, now what do I mean by that? I mean, with that laser focus, read it as if you probably won't get to read it again. Okay, so you're really focusing in, you're reading very, very closely. Also, you're reading actively and not passively. What does that mean? What's the difference between active and passive reading? Well, passive reading is like when you read a novel for fun. You're sitting on your sofa, you're reading Harry Potter, or you're reading The Hunger Games or something like that. You're kind of, you're in the story, you're in, in the mood, you're in the groove, but you're, you're kind of not really reading with any particular purpose apart from comprehension. When you read uh, actively, you're reading with particular uh, questions in mind with a particular purpose. So you're reading thinking, why did the writer write this? What was his purpose in writing this? What is the writer trying to achieve by writing this? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you're kind of asking yourself higher order thinking questions about what you're reading, um, and that's called reading actively, okay? And when you're reading uh, SAT passages, you should be not only reading for comprehension, quickly, efficiently, but you should also be keeping in mind uh, things like why did the writer write this? Uh, what's the writer's opinion? You should also be looking out for things like uh, transition signals, like uh, contrast signals, like however, or uh, you know, things like additionally to show it extra information. And that way you'll know when there's kind of a, a break in uh, the text or the text is changing this way or that. And this is, these are important things to keep in mind um, when you're making that big read off the passage. Okay, also focus in on the last line of the introduction. Um, in nonfiction uh, passages, this is usually the, the last, sorry, the last line of the introduction is usually the thesis of the passage. Not always, um, but you can go to the conclusion as well. And um, it's good to read the introduction and the, the conclusion to one after the other. Okay, read the introduction first, then the conclusion. And you can kind of see how they match up and kind of see where the thesis is. You should be able to ascertain what the thesis is um, after reading both of those. But I would read the whole passage first, okay? Don't just read the introduction and the conclusion to begin. Um, also, the opening, opening sentences of paragraphs will help you out. Um, you might find topic sentences in there that support the writer's thesis. Um, yeah, but as I say, these three things are only I would say you need to make a, a, a quick read of the passage first before you kind of focus in on these things as well. And I've already covered transitional words. Okay, step four, um, what you do is answer the questions. Okay, so what you'll do is you, this, the questions that you circled at the beginning in step one, the main idea, big picture questions, just leave those, okay? Put those away, leave those till the end. And then what you'll do is you'll answer uh, the rest of the questions that you have. You'll answer the specific line questions, get those out of the way quickly, um, and you'll answer all the other questions as well. And these questions will usually go in chronological order with the passage itself. So students often ask that, are the questions in chronological order? The answer is, yeah, they are. Um, there might be a rare occurrence or not, but it's, it's, it's almost always the case. Um, step five is answering the circle questions. So by this stage, um, you'll have a very, you should have a very detailed understanding of what the text is about, where everything is, everything's located within that text. And then you can start answering those bigger picture questions, those uh, kind of main idea questions. And you're much more likely to get them right if you answer them at the end. If you answer them at the start, good luck. You know, it's just a very, very bad technique to do that. And once you've answered the, the main idea, Big picture questions, then you just transfer your answer to your bubble sheet and you are done. So there you are. There's five steps you can use to approach SAT reading. I hope they help. Um, if they do help, you can leave a little message below the video. Or if you want me to cover any other SAT topics for that matter, I'm happy to do so. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.